Hello my dear friends, you're on the military summary channel and today we will discuss the situation in Ukraine on the 18th of August of 2024. Today we have a lot of very interesting updates, so let's start. And first we're going to talk about the Taretsk, the Pokrovska and the South Donetsk direction. We'll begin this video with this territory, the area that is the, under the responsibilities of the group of forces South and the group of forces Center. First, I would like to tell you that during the previous uh, two weeks, the Russians have been showing us very, very nice progress on the ground. The Russians managed to break through the Ukrainian defense belt along the railways and they captured, already captured, significant number of villages to the west and the southwest of progress. The Russians managed to improve their positions significantly in the Taretsk and the Russians managed to improve their positions significantly in the south Donetsk direction. And the question is, as for the Pakrov's direction, what is is the reason of how the Russians managed to do this. So there are a few, just two answers. The Russians managed to do this due to their professionality, due to their experience, due to the number of forces they have and the lack and the gap in Ukrainian forces or the Ukrainians were falling back towards more reliable positions. And today we would like to discuss the situation and to find the answer to this question. Before that, let's start with the South Donetsk direction. According to the information we have, according to the pro-Ukrainian mappers, the Russians, as a result of offensive operation, managed to establish complete control over T0524 road and to cut this road physically in this area. And uh, the most important thing, the most the valuable thing from this report is that this report today was published by the pro-Ukrainian mappers but not just pro-Russian or neutral and the Russians managed to establish complete control over this part of the coal mine we got the video of how the Russians were attacking this territory yesterday and this is the video how the Russians landed in this territory and how the Russians began the assault operation but as for this video we can't tell for sure whether the Russians managed to capture this territory on the 16th of August but most likely the Russians managed to do this and this is very important because the battle for the coal mine south Donbass has begun and this is the coal mine we are talking about this is a very powerful stronghold with a very big industrial zone and with the telecom behind during the previous 24 hours, the Russians published two geolocations from this area. In this video, we can see the Russian FPV drone who was attacking the Ukrainian car, maybe the Ukrainian vehicle, maybe the vehicle of the FPV drone operators of the armed forces of Ukraine. And as a result of this attack, the vehicle was destroyed. So nothing special. The, the, most, the, the value of this video is that the Russians now have possibilities to attack the Ukrainian vehicles with FPV drones and they can get this territory. A little bit further in the southern direction, we have another, some parking place or so some barracks, some facilities. And this territory was attacked by the Russian Lumur missile. I reminded that this is the missile that the Russian helicopters uh, carry and as a result of attack another temporary point and a temporary position of armed force of Ukraine was destroyed. So based on this video we can make a conclusion that the Russians answered the active phase of uh, assault in towards the um, coal, coal mine uh, south Donbass. We don't know for sure how long the Russians are going to do this but obviously uh, we can start counting days most likely when the this coal mine in this in this area will fall. Now let's move further in the Pakrov's direction. As you can see during the previous 24 hours we received significant number of geolocations and icons and they are very important. First let's talk about the report that was provided by the Ministry of Defense of Russian Federation and according to the Russians as a result of very heavy clashes the Russians managed to establish complete control over the village by the name of Sviridinovka. This territory was captured according to the geolocation a few days ago but just today we got the official statement of the Ministry of Defense. Furthermore, according to different mappers, the Russians managed to improve even further in the northwestern direction and to capture the village of Novotaretska. So this is the current situation in this area. Now let's move further to Grodovka and now we are coming to the most important, uh, let's say, part of the battle for the Pokrov's direction. As for Grodovka, we got the video today and this video we can see the work of Ukraine 151st mechanized brigade how they were counter-attacking the russian forces and how they were attacking the russians within a very close distance 
And the main problem of this direction of Grodovka itself from the Russian side is that they were stopped. So for the previous few days we haven't received anything about additional progress of the Russians towards the central part. The Ukrainians managed to stabilize the situation or at least to slow down the Russians. And for now we don't have anything that can confirm additional progress of the Russians towards the Artyoma street or towards the northwestern part of the village. We're not saying that the Russians were stopped because they can't continue moving further basically maybe this is not a part of the Russian plan to move further maybe the Russians uh, just uh, stabilized the area and uh, stabilized the flank and, and continue moving further in the western direction as for the southern direction as you can see during the previous 24 hours we received significant number of flags which confirms additional progress of the Russians most of these icons um, let's say were published by different mappers and just one geolocated video which means that most of these reports uh, still haven't received any geolocated confirmation let's start from the beginning according to pro-russian sources the russians as a result of offensive operation established complete control over the village by the name of mizhova furthermore according to different uh, pro-russian sources completely separate and reliable the russians managed to establish complete control over the village by the name of skuchne and to capture this uh, artillery pocket completely so summarizing everything this territory was captured by the russians as a result of clashes during the previous few days but of course according to experience according to let's say the previous reports the russians are not able to capture such a significant territory as just in one day so most likely the ukrainians abandoned their positions uh, trying to escape the possible encirclement and the russians captured basically the empty uh, let's say positions of armed force of ukraine as for the village of Novozhelanna and Zavitna, according to neutral mappers and according to pro-Ukrainian mappers, this territory, this cloud, this area, this Novozhelanna village itself was captured by the Russians as a result of offensive operation. Most like it's true, but we are waiting for additional geolocations to confirm this. As for the village of Zhelanna, during the previous 24 hours we got the video from the 47th mechanized brigade of armed forces of Ukraine. In this video we can see how the Ukrainians were bombing and attacking the Russian forces right inside of this area. This video confirms that everything to the north was captured by the Russians as a result of clashes during the previous days. Now we are moving to Zavitne. This is the village of Zavitne that located to the south of Zhelanne. And today some sources reported that the Russians captured this territory completely. We are talking about pro-Russian sources. Another Russian uh, pro-Russian source published the video. And the author of this video says that in this video we can see the Russian soldiers who raised the flag exactly in the village of Zavitne. But the problem is that uh, the video was made from very, very uncomfortable angle. And from this angle, from this perspective, it is very difficult to geolocate the, building, the exact building where the Russians raised their flag. So this, that's why we are not adjusting the map. That's why we are waiting for some geolocations or for additional video from the same area that will allow us to geolocate the, the real positions of the armed forces of Russian Federation and to adjust the map. But let's keep in our minds that we got some video according to some pro-Russian authors that the, that the village of Zavitna was captured. The icon was added softly but let's keep this in our mind. Now let's move further. Now let's talk about the most important thing and uh, try to uh, get the answer to the question how the Russians managed to improve their position so fast and what is going to be next. The sources are saying that some different mappers and different military experts began drawing some arrows about further Russian offensive operation in Novogrodovka, about further Russian offensive operation towards Pokrovsk and many, many other things and so on. But if you ask my opinion, I see that, and I have added on map, the landfills and the terricons that the Russians reached, the line of the terricons and the landfills that the Russians managed to reach as a result of offensive operation. Basically, in front of the Russians, in front of the Russian edge positions in Nikolaevka and to the south of Nikolaevka, to the west of Orlovka and to the northwest of Zhuravka, there are more than six uh, landfills and the terricons. This is the first one that located to the north of the city of Novogrodovka and this is the terricon of, uh, of the Novgorodska coal mine number one. This is the terricon of Novgorodska coal mine number two and this is the uh, terricon of the, uh, this is the landfill of the coal mine number three. 
a little bit further in the southern direction there are a few more coal mines and the terracons we are talking about the coal mine russia and the coal mine by the name of uh, karachenka a little bit further in the southern direction there are two more coal mines and the landfills and the terracons the terracon of ukraine by the name of ukraine and the second one the terracon of selidivska so summarizing everything we see that the russians managed to reach the wall the wall of the coal mines the wall of the landfills and it's it's very very difficult most likely is going to be for the Russians to go through uh, th this territory we're not saying that this is impossible most likely it's possible but obviously this is going to be very difficult because the territory around the terracons is open no trees no rivers nothing just the uh, fields that is a very good um, target for Ukrainian mortar systems FPV drones and artillery forces we have the railways that connect uh, different cities and towns on this line and of course we have different fortifications and strongholds and now it's uh, the time when we're going to receive the answer to the question whether the russians managed to capture this territory due to their experience and um, level of their trainings and level of their support or it just was a lack and the ukrainians were just falling back towards more reliable positions towards the wall of the landfills we're going to get this information the answer to this question maybe even tomorrow because according to information we have the russians have already Already began the assault operation towards the landfill of Russia the landfill by the name of Russia and we got the video from this area in this video we can see the Russian FPV drone who was flying above this landfill on the top of the landfill the Russians managed to discover the vehicle of FPV drone operators of armored forces of Ukraine and as a result of attack that armored vehicle that vehicle just regular vehicle was destroyed so most likely the Russians will make another attempt to capture to seize control over this and we'll see whether I do can do this or not. A little bit further to the north, we got report that the Russians, as a result of offensive operation, managed to reach the outskirts of the city of uh, Krutoy Yar. And furthermore, the sources reported that first sabotage and reconnaissance group have already reached the outskirts of the coal mine Donbass number one. So this one. There are very heavy clashes right now. And currently summarizing everything, we can make a conclusion that the Russians are trying to capture two landfills. The landfill of Russia and the landfill of Donbass number one. If the Russians are able to capture these two landfills very fast, very soon, that means that the Russians managed to capture all the territories before due to their experience and their professionality. But if the Russians are stopped, then there are very high chances that they might be stopped for a very long time. Now let's move further. Of course, we see that the Russians are moving further in the southern direction. And from the roads and from the villages to the south, we continue receiving a significant number of videos of Ukrainian FPV of Russian FPV drone strikes on Ukrainian vehicles. In this video, we can see another personal carrier that most likely was evacuating the Ukrainians from the line of combat contact, but was attacked and destroyed by the Russian FPV drone. In the area of the city by the name of Ukrainsk, we got another video, and this is also very interesting. Uh, the Russians began bombing and attacking the cities and the positions of the armed forces of Ukraine where the Ukrainians have never been expecting for another Russian attack. In this video we can see the FPV drone of Russian forces who was flying above the entrance to the city and when the Russians discovered the movements of Ukrainian vehicle the Russians attacked this vehicle and destroyed it. As for Pakrovsk and Mirnagrad itself, during the previous 24 hours the Russians were bombing this territory heavily with FAPs with different types of weapon and the pro-Ukrainian sources, pro-Ukrainian mappers, Deep State analyzed the situation and suggested the local authorities to begin a total evacuation of the civilians because the situation in this area is going to be very difficult once again summarizing everything about the Pakrov's direction currently it's very important and probably vital question for the Russians to capture two or three of the landfills and the terracons in this area if the Russians are able to do this very fast then they will be able to move further in the western direction because these terracons, these landfills will allow the Russians to control the situation around in the city of Selidova, Mikhailovka and further Ukrainka, Mirnagrad and Pakrovsk 
But if the Ukrainians are able to stop the Russians on these landfills, then most likely the Russians would be forced to waste a lot of time uh, by, while crossing this territory or will they will start thinking about another plan about the plan b how to let's say go through this area without being engaged in the battle for this territory now let's move further today is the day of the terracons and the landfills now let's move to Novgorodska and to new york agglomeration and we got one of the most important update and also this is an update about the control over the landfill of pivnichne the russian sources published the video how the russian soldiers were moving on the top of the landfill the russian drone was flying above area and was coordinating the movements of russian soldiers and when the russian soldiers appeared on the screen they asked them to stop and to raise the flag. This video was geolocated immediately and this video confirms that the Russians as a result of clashes managed to establish control over the most important and strategical hill, the coal mine Pivnichne and the landfill and the Terikon that located behind it. So this territory based on this video was adjusted and added under complete Russian control. Obviously the, Ukrainians, the Ukrainian situation in this area worsened significantly. Now the Russians can control everything Everything. They can control everything that is happens in the city of Tarets. They can coordinate and they can control the further um, stage of offensive operation. Let's talk about New York. According to information we have, according to different pro-Russian sources, as a result of clashes during the previous 24 hours, the Russians managed to establish complete control over this small pocket. So, which means that so there were almost no resistance from the Ukrainian side, and most likely during the previous days and during previous few days the Ukrainians abandoned their positions completely uh, from this artillery pocket trying to escape the encirclement in the cauldron and most likely the Ukrainians managed to activate the majority of their forces maybe they left some regular forces whose main purpose was to slow down the Russians and now we see that New York if this information is correct if this line of combat contact is correct that means that currently the distance between the edge Russian positions in the New York itself uh, and the uh, edge Russian positions, let's say on this intersection of roads, is less than two kilometers, which means that the Ukrainians who are currently located in the industrial zone and in the New York itself is uh, are already encircled by the Russians. But once again, most likely the Ukrainians realize then they understand and realize the situation, and most likely during this upcoming night, the Ukrainians will abandon their positions from the industrial zone, and maybe tomorrow New York will be captured completely by the Russians. And the Ministry of Defense of Russian Federation will provide this, this report during the daily report. Now let's move further and let's go to the Kursk direction where the Ukrainians continued their offensive operation, but the Ukrainians were completely slowed down. The Ukrainians, uh, it's already a third or fourth day in a row when we continue receiving significant updates, significant number of updates about the preparation of armed forces of Ukraine. Uh, let's say of their uh, possible attack towards Gluchovskoy region but yet the Ukrainians haven't started anything. We got a lot of updates about destroyed bridges, we have additional updates about the gray zone that was uh, captured by the Ukrainians in the vicinity of Tyotkina, but yet we haven't received anything that can confirm very heavy clashes in this area. Something tells me that Ukrainians have concentrated their force along the border, but for some reason they don't know for sure whether to begin this offensive operation or not. It's like some negotiations is going right now, and Ukrainians try to understand whether the Western countries are going to support them in this offensive or not, whether the Ukrainians are are going to get additional benefits and dividends from the western countries or not because if uh, they will conquer this territory capture the village of Gluchovskoy and Zvane so everything to the south of the river of Seim, but they will not receive anything in exchange from the western countries so there is no reason even to attack in this area so they try to as I understand to trade a better uh, positions with the United States of America better price for this offensive and this is probably the reason of a pause furthermore as for the village of of Koryneva, there are very heavy clashes in this direction. The Ukrainians are trying to attack the village of Kamarovka. The Ukrainians are trying to attack the village of Snagas. They are suffering significant losses, but yet haven't managed to establish control over even a single village. Uh, let's say of the village we've just discussed. The only thing the Ukrainians got is the significant number of prisoners of war that were captured by the Russians as a result of another attack conducted by the Ukrainians. Very interesting situation is coming. Information is coming 
coming from the village of Olgovka. As you can see, we have lots of geolocations, and both sides are is telling their own version of the situation there. The Russians are saying that the village of Olgovka is under complete Russian control. We have even some different map changes on the ground, according to different pro-Russian mappers, that Olgovka was secured and everything is okay. But as for the fire anomalies map, we still continue receiving updates about very heavy clashes inside of this village. Furthermore, we got the first geolocation from the village of Olgovka that confirms the Ukrainian control over this territory. In this video, we can see the Ukrainian tank that entered the central part of the village and that was attacking the Russian forces. But as a result of Lancet strike or FPV drone strike, that tank was damaged and destroyed. So we can tell for say for sure that most likely these areas in the gray zone and most likely there are very heavy clashes right now in the central part. The Ukrainians are attacking from the southeast and the Russians are counter-attacking from the northwest. And most likely this upcoming no night is going to be decisive night when the, uh, the destiny and the future of this village is going to be resolved. Now let's move to the eastern direction. We have additional changes on the ground. The Russian sources managed to discover the concentration of Ukrainian forces in the vicinity of the village Cherkaska Parechne. According to this author of this video, uh, I don't see any concentration of the forces, but the Russians are saying that exactly in the forest in front of your screens, the Russians managed to uh, discover a very huge concentration of Ukrainian forces and the Russians began bombing this territory. This video confirms just one thing, not about the concentration, but at least the presence of the Ukrainians exactly in this point, which confirms that Ukrainians collecting concentration in their forces before further movements in the northern direction, and the next village is going to be Kosica, maybe that the Ukrainians will try to move along this road towards the village of Bakhtinka, Kireyevka and Leontinka, but I doubt, the, I doubt this is going to happen ever. As for Martinovka, we still haven't received any more or less reliable updates about the situation in this village, because uh, the Russians are saying that this village is under complete Russian control, but the Ukrainians are saying that this village is under complete Ukraine control. As for the facts and the geolocations, today we got a video where we can see how the Russians were PV droning the Ukrainians in the fields in front of the village of Martinovka and inside of the village itself. So most likely 50% uh, of the village is under complete Ukraine control and we are talking about the northern part and the central and the eastern part is under Russian control. So obviously the Russians still have control over this territory and the Russians from these positions uh, have always possibilities to fall back towards the village of Pushkarne. So most likely this is the situation on the ground. Now let's talk about the southeastern direction. There are very heavy clashes right now. We don't have a lot of geolocations. The only thing we have is the Ukrainian F Russian FPV drone attack on Ukrainian positions inside of the village of Spalne, which confirms that there are still Ukrainians and that this is approximately the line of combat contact. So this is a very important video to clarify the line, but uh, we got a lot of uh, photos, satellite photos of the fire anomalies. If you take a look at this picture, I would like to point your attention to the right corner, bottom corner, as you can see significant number of the concentration of red uh, dots, red uh, squares, which confirms that there is a hell on earth exactly in this place. Everything in this direction was set on fire, maybe the forest is burning, I don't know, but there are very heavy clashes and the Russians, as I understand, are trying to counter attack. Furthermore, we got reports that Ukrainians managed to cross the river and are trying to attack the village of Cherkaska Kanapilka and to attack the village of Ulanak. Both attacks were repelled by the Russians, according to the Minister of Defense of Russian Federation. So, most likely that was just reconnaissance in combat or in force. Most likely this upcoming night, the Ukrainians will repeat their attempts to attack in this direction. Anyway, summarizing everything, we see that the situation is not so good. The Ukrainians haven't managed to... Uh, get the results, they haven't managed to force the Russians to redeploy significant forces from Do the Donbas direction, from the Pakrov's direction, and that's why this is not exactly what the Ukrainians needed in this area. 
Also, the Ukrainians have significant problems in the Pokrov's direction, but just after the fall of the first Terikons, we're gonna receive 100% sure answer to the question whether the Russians are able to capture this territory very fast. The Ukrainians are about to lose the Pateryatsk and the New York itself. So very difficult situation and the Ukrainians urgently needs to start the plan B or it's already plan C or plan G, I don't know. And today some Ukrainian sources began spreading the information uh, for about the Transnistria. They're not saying anything, they're just posting the map of Moldova and the region of Transnistria, uh, adding additional note that uh, I'm not telling anything but uh, so uh, so summarizing all these posts from the Ukrainian sources about this, about Moldova and this small region, the Ukrainians are trying to tell everyone that uh, the next target, if everything goes so bad and if the Ukrainians are defeated in the Kurs direction, they will get their victory and most likely Transnistria is going to be a victor of armed force of Ukraine. And telling the truth, uh, if the Ukrainians are able to capture Transnistria, this can bring them significant benefits and significant dividends from the Western countries. Uh, for a few reasons. First of all, as for the Kurs direction, uh, despite the problems and progress of armed force of Ukraine in the beginning of their offensive, the Russians by the 18th of August managed to stabilize the situation and now additional square meters and um, Ukrainians are getting with a significant number of uh, let's say losses uh, in manpower and armored vehicles. But as for Transnistria, if the Ukrainians are able to conduct offensive operation on the territory of this small region, most likely the Russians will not be able to do anything. The only thing the Russians are able to do is to begin bombing Ukraine with the nuclear weapon, but we understand that this is not going to happen. Furthermore, if the Ukrainians are able to take under control Transnistria, Moldova will be able to restore their constitutional order and their territory integrity and so on. And nothing can stop Moldova from joining joining European Union and the NATO. Of course, this might be like the main target and the main purpose of them. Furthermore, uh, the Ukrainians will be able to get the access to the warehouses and the ammo depots, which will also allow them to improve their positions at least for another month. And that's it for, the, for today. Military Summary Channel reminds to we condemn any violence in the world. Thank you for your watching. Subscribe to my channel. Put your likes, join my Patreon and have a good day. Bye-bye.